Hello, I'm Brian Kepinger, and today we're going to work on making the crop out sample project in Unreal Engine 5.2 work with the magic symbol recognizer component. Before we begin, I want to just point something out. If you look at the axis of this sh island shape right here, you can see the X is pointing this direction and the Y is pointing this direction. That's going to create issues with the magic symbol recognizer component since the demo map has different axes directions and so when you draw a symbol in the demo map and try to save it and then load it in this map it won't work so we're going to try to have a nice workaround for that in this recording so to begin we're going to go into our blueprint folder of the what do you call this crop out sample project and then we're going to go into our core player we're going to find, okay, here is our player that has the cursor, so we're going to use that as our location thing later on. For now, we're going to go into input. We're going to go into base input, and we are going to add a mapping, and that mapping will be our draw symbol click, and we're going to make that right mouse button. We'll save that, and we'll get this error. We're going to ignore this for now because I noticed this error popped up even if we don't add anything. But if you look, you can add a modifier here, but right now we're not going to mess with that. So now that we've set that up, let's go into our player. We're going to open this BP player, and if you check the viewport, you can see we've got our cursor here, and we're going to use that later on. There, go to add component, we'll say symbol recognizer component that's now there we'll compile another thing we want to do is go into our symbol recognizer demo we're gonna go into blueprints our top-down controller we're going to select all of oh, not all this we're gonna select the green sections comment sections make sure all that's selected just in case we're gonna copy and paste that we're going to go into our player in our event graph, zoom out, we're going to move this up here, this is our begin play function, paste this here, control V, so where it says get location under cursor, we're going to do nothing, because that is a function in the demo project that we don't actually need and we can re replicate that by getting the location of this cursor, because this is technically the cursor, it's just set up differently. Um, we'll move this here. So this sets up our mapping, which is that base input we just added the symbol click to. Then on possess, we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. So let's take this thing here, and we're going to drag that into our widget. So this will show our symbol set up. We're going to delete this later and you can create a custom solution for this that's cleaner but for right now we're just keeping it as simple as possible. So to do that we'll take our cursor object, we'll go here and we'll say alright get world location. We don't test if there's a hit so we're just going to delete that for now. We'll take this and plug it into here and follow where these go looks like there's one that spawns the system there and we'll just delete that because we don't need it make sure you plug this in on I think it was in started and not triggered but we can test that if we have to so moving right along we got our controlled pawn and start capture so what do we want to do here we want to get our self because our self is the BP player and that will give us the cursor location and actually not our self let's do the let's do the cursor no that's fine we'll, we'll keep it with self because that's an actual actor and that's actor location I don't even think that's being used it's just there just in case yeah so it's not being used it's just there just in case so moving on we have the glow glow trail variable we just want to create that that's pretty simple here we have get location under cursor again we'll just copy and paste these two that we made earlier and plug that there add that location into here delete the hit check branch we'll just assume that there's a hit which it's not ideal but it's gonna work for now 
Let's promote this cursor trail timer to a variable, compile, that gets rid of those errors. And there's one more thing we need to do, which is very important. If we go into our symbol recognizer component and we scroll down, I actually updated this yesterday, but it hasn't shown up yet. So we need to change our character cast here. Like I added a cast field printout so we would show a message, but right now in this version it doesn't have it and it's like okay, hard to figure out that problem. Anyway, so we'll delete that. Get our control pawn. We want to cast to BP player because that's what we're working with. We'll say true. We'll bring that across. We're gonna grab the spring arm of our player and we're just gonna replace this old spring arm with the new one. I'm going to just say add a print string here for safeties and we'll say player cast failed in symbol recognizer. Although we shouldn't see that message but we want to know if it's there just in case. Make that red. Boom. Okay. So that's just our little safety check. Compile and save. You can actually set it so when you compile it auto saves. And I did that once in a project, and then somehow that feature got switched off and ended up causing a huge headache. Okay, so now let's test it. Let's hit play. Right now we're still in play and editor, but we'll just work with that. Oh, let's slide over. We can draw and trace. It doesn't save, so let's create a new symbol. Let's say, let's just do rain for now and we'll draw some zigzags see if it worked go view and we got our zigzags they have the wrong rotation oh geez so now that we started a new game and our guys have a little bit of food so they don't starve to death let's just test that their symbol's still there that's good let's draw it recognize rain let's right click and you can see that the rain is there it's just very small because the scale in this game is a little different than our demo map so we can change that all right so let's open up our symbol recognizer we're gonna adjust some scale values um, some other settings you can adjust if you'd like are like say the size this is at 300 maybe we want it at 500 just to test that that's like how big it scales the resampled shape Okay, so one way to change the scale of all of your spawned spells would be to go into the cast spell section, change this transform thing. I noticed that it kind of messes up the spawn location of them, so to be a little more accurate, we're going to go in to our spells themselves. If we go up to blueprint spells, say let's go into rain, oops, wrong one. Well, actually, you could do it here, probably. Let's just say five. Of course, that didn't update all of them. What I was going to say, though, is instead of going into the blueprint or just scaling at the top level, you could actually go into your Niagara system specifically and start adjusting, say, like your shape size or your particle size. But anyway, so let's test that this scaling up the shape at the blueprint level of the spell works better than scaling at the top blueprint level which seem to screw up the spawn locations so we'll do our little rain and right click that does not look bigger to me I don't know about you that still looks small that's very strange I wonder what that's about oh that's because that's the rain splashing Jeez. <laughs> Let's try that again. I guess I should have scaled up the default scene root, probably. But here, let's try that one more time. I don't know if you guys want me to delete those little bloopers out of these videos or to keep them there, because like sometimes you might make that same mistake and wonder what the heck's going on. So you can kind of see the rain. It's not super obvious. For that, you're going to want to go into the Niagara system and increase particle sizes and all that, but I will leave that as an exercise to you. Okay, we're going to create another symbol for fire just to make it easy because that last one was being tricky. 
So we're just going to do a triangle. It's pretty hard to screw up a triangle. That didn't save. Why didn't it save? Oh no. We ruined it. Setting up our custom collision boxes screwed things up. We need overlap events for our trace responses. Okay, I think it turns out that we don't want to generate overlap events, which is kind of counterintuitive to me. Let's just make sure that that works, because I feel like if you're not generating overlap events, then it wouldn't impact the fireball explosion. But maybe that's like a one-way thing. So now we got our grass, we got our cursor, we can trace, that's a good sign. And no explosion. Huh. Very strange. Why is that? Because like we don't we aren't overlapping. Hmm. So this doesn't even matter. We could just fake it and do like okay after what do you think? So this is not ideal. We would want to do the overlap event, but because I'm in a tutorial and I have like not enough time because I don't want to waste your guys' time, we're going to say like okay after 1.5 seconds do an explosion. See what happens. 1.5 seconds is probably too long. Boom. Ah, pretty close, huh? So let's just say that you draw the triangle symbol and you drop it on. <laughs> Oops. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so let's quickly go over again how to set up spells and all that. If you watched the quick setup tutorial, then you already know how to do that. And if you haven't watched that yet, you should go watch it. That way you know what's going on. And I don't have to show you this. But just because some of you won't watch it, I'll show you really quick. So in your symbol recognizer blueprints folder, we got a spells data table. If you want to add a new spell or have one match the existing templates, you have to make sure that the name of this spell or symbol is the same as this row name and then after that you will add a name here and map which blueprint you want to use with that symbol or spell thing so let's say you want to add a new one let's say you want to do lightning you go like that add lightning you would say the name is lightning and you would do bp lightning which you would create on your own um, if you go to the quick setup tutorial that I made, there's a quick overview of how that's done. And that's about it. So now, I mean, if you're setting up your own game project, you probably don't want the player to have access to be able to create their own symbols, or you might. That's up to your project. But you're going to want to hide these again. So after you have saved all your sim spell symbols in the templates and different variations of them, which you should know about if you watch the quick setup tutorial. You'll know that you'll want different variations of each symbol so that they are more accurate. You'll go back into your player controller, or BP player, I mean, and you'll just simply unplug our HUD setup by simply, there we go, because you no longer want to see that on the screen. We'll go back in to test it. Minimize that. You'll hit your triangle. That's your fire, and then you'll drop it, and then it would explode, but there's no overlap events because apparently adding overlap events to this map screws up the proceduralism, and if you do have it block things, then your cursor gets messed up. And there's definitely ways to work around that, because I have in a separate project, and I'm trying to see if I can come up with a quick and easy way for you guys to do it. So yeah, that's kind of a quick and dirty setup guide of how to get the uh, symbol recognizer to work in the crop out sample project. Um, it's obviously not super ideal that you have to do the little HUD user interface hiding and showing thing. Uh, ideally, we would just be able to open up that demo map, which reminds me, I'll show you that right now. There's this weird thing that happens if you go into the demo map and it's all white. If you see that problem, come into the post-process volume and if you just hide that, 
you'll see that you can see that again. So you just delete that post-process volume. I'm not sure why that ends up there, but it does. Another strange thing with the demo map in the crop out project is that if you click, you don't move, and so you have to double click. And yeah, so if you want to create a symbol, you actually have to double click the symbol and then hold it. So it still works, it just doesn't work as good. And also if you save a symbol in this map, again, because the x-axis and y-axis are different from the crop out sample project, it won't work well. So you're going to want to save it in the crop out sample project map as we showed you in this tutorial. Um, I might be able to modify and then update the recognizer component to handle different axes like that or have like maybe a way to custom set it but right now this is just the quickest and easiest way to do it. So yeah. So that concludes the crop out sample tutorial projects with the magic symbol recognizer component. I hope that helps you get started in a cool project and helps you create some interesting and fun projects and things and cool and awesome and things and stuff and things. Anyway, you can find a link to the magic symbol recognizer component in the description below and if you have any questions or issues you can leave a comment or you can also hop on over to the Unreal Engine forum thread that I've created and I'll provide a link to that as well. And other than that, I hope you have an awesome time on your projects. Ciao. Peace. Later. Buenos noches. Salut. Uh, yeah. Bonsoir. Au revoir.